Hi there, and welcome to another Seriously Hungry themed around France. So for that reason, we've got Gekadami here in the amazing studio to talk French food. Yes, I am the expert of all things French. The last episode, or part, part of this French connection, was um, cheeses. Famous French cheeses. And this time we're going to the, um, what the French call the resistance piece. We've got good old snails. Mm. I'll show that to the camera there. The box is a bit beaten up, unfortunately, from the voyage all the way from France. Allow me to, uh, allow me to unbox these. It looks like you dug up that box from the same place you dug up them snails. Indeed. Actually, in all fairness, those snails were like nice big dobbin pieces. They're pretty big, uh, yeah. They're pretty big pieces of snail, aren't they? You can see the green side there. It kind of looks like they've already treated those snails with some um, kind of cream buttery stuff there. I probably have, yeah. That is indeed the case. These are pre-buttered. Uh, we're going to be eating these like this, so generally in France, uh, I mean you can't eat like this obviously, but you know, they can be also be incorporated into a recipe. So we've got that, and of course, you can't eat snails without having, you can already see it next to me here, the frog's legs, which the label's already fallen off, but these are indeed frog's legs. It looks like you just picked them up straight from the farmer's market. All the way from Indonesia. Oh, well, I mean, that's not quite uh, French, is it? But... Well, I mean, the French, I guess, but the, the frogs were harvested in Indonesia. Um, we're going to have to cook these up. Kind of look bulbous and gross. Yeah, they did exist with um, out with the bones already removed. These are still boned. But you know, where's the fun in that, right? They wouldn't even recognise them if they were if the bones were removed. Right, right. And uh, yeah, that's not really what we're looking for. We're going to want to uh, have pick up frog bone cheek, frog bones with our teeth. The greatest sensation ever, I'm sure. Mm. So, again, I've never actually had these myself. Let's move over to the serious kitchen to get some cooking done. So, um, it's not really much to see. You can see the legs, though. You can see the, the leggishness there. It's pretty horrible, muscly legs. Mm. We'll be chewing. I guess, um... Yeah, just put it down. One more. One more for, for a second one of us. Let's see. Okay, quality one. Nice pair of legs. Are you a leg man or breast man? Hmm. Time to find out. But whilst that's cooking, we're going to move on down to the oven. Got a tray here. Put a few of these snails on. How many? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, let's just put the two on because you know. One. Two. One each, right? One each can't waste food. There are children in Africa who don't have frogs like the snails. Alright, so this oven's been pre created probably about 175. What is the sign these are actually done? Um, yes. So let's give them a poke. See they're kind of sticking. Oh, I'm getting sprayed in oil. Alright. So apparently, um, I have to kind of cook these until both sides are done. Um, they kind of feel stuck together. I kind of assume these will open up, I guess. Yeah. I can tell the muscles are formed, I guess. That's a piece of tape. That's how it looks more like something. It's not very chicken. Yeah. Ooh, Although you can kind of see that froggish texture. Yeah, there. Yeah. Taking a look at these uh, snails. You can see the kind of dribbling their goo. I don't oh, know if we should have yeah. cooked them the other way around or... Um, you can't quite see it on the camera, but yeah, there you go. Um, that looks like a bit of a mistake, doesn't it? Yeah. We'll uh, come back to this and see how things have gone. Alright, our French delicacies have been all cooked up. We've given the snails 10 minutes in the oven at a uh, fairly medium heat, 170 degrees. And we've given the frog's legs uh, about 12 minutes on the frying pan at level four, so a fairly medium high. 
All right, Francois. So my eyes are stinging from that cooking. So here they are, these amazing, uh, you can see the frog's legs there are very frog-leggy. Show it to the camera. It looks like a good old barbecue thing. It looks like, I'm guessing that these the legs are bent around the wrong way because I don't quite know what this part here is. It must be the bot inside the body, normally. I mean, otherwise this frog was very well endowed. Hmm. Well, we'll get on with eating them first, I think. Yeah, you want the pair of want the pair of legs? Well, I don't want a pair of legs, but you're gonna have gonna a pair of legs anyway, right? So I'll put this plate down. Take my legs. I'll also take a piece of paper. It's a little bit kind of seems like a yeah, like a bit of skeleton or something. It's hard, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's like a handle, a natural handle, which is cool, I guess. It's God worth, has made it that way. It's worth pointing out that um, for, for at least frog's legs are only uh, 68 calories per 100 grams. Mm. That's pretty damn low. So, I, I guess if they're good, like, you could kind of use these as like a... a uh, what, as a dieting... Diet, diet, that's it, I look what I was thinking of, a dieting meat. They have a slight... Mildly pungent smell. They smell frogs. Mostly can smell the uh, like the charcoal off them. Charring. Yeah. To me, yeah. I, I recognise the smell of frogs. Like well, I remember when I was a kid in the garden, I used to find frogs in the garden, and I, I recognise that smell. That's yeah, pretty funny. It's that slightly unusual froggy smell. Yeah. I've got a nice piece of a uh, nice piece of muscle coming off the bone already there. Delightful. So that will give me a piece to uh, nibble on there straight away. You, oh, right. you ready? Yeah. Let's go! Mm. Oh, it's funny. They are. It's got the same, similar texture as chicken. It, to me, this is a lot more softer than chicken. But, it's like a subtle... The skin is like eating chicken skin. But the meat inside is like some uh, different textured meat. It's not thick and muscly as I thought it would be. No, it's, it's really soft, isn't it? Hmm. It's kind of softness that you might expect why this is a delicacy because it's a very soft, I mean, yieldy meat. There's not much to see inside, it's just white like chicken meat. But, um, it's. I wouldn't it's, say it's the most tastiest thing, but there's not much flavour. Again, I, I can kind of, like, as it was one of the cases of one of the cheeses, I can kind of recognise the, um, the smell and the taste. Hmm. It. It kind of. It's kind of a cliche to say that every meat tastes like chicken. It doesn't quite taste like chicken, but it reminds me a bit of chicken. It's like a less superior version of chicken. Yeah, it tastes less superior version of chicken, but I like the texture. I really do like that texture of it. You could do a lot of this texture, yeah. Because I don't like... I'm actually not a fan of chicken. I think chicken's too tough, generally. You've, like it has For me, the only type of chicken I really like is like chicken nuggets. I reckon with the right sauce, this could be particularly good. Yeah, it's worth pointing out that we specifically cut these without any seasoning. Normally you would, of course, add seasoning. I mean, besides the, uh, the grease, of course. Yeah, I think with the right seasoning or sauce, this could be really good, because the texture is... The more I kind of eat this, the more I like that texture. Are you disappointed it's not springy? I don't know. I like that all wrong, didn't I? Yeah. Early frog's anatomy is very different from that of, uh, say, a horse. Hmm. Yeah, yeah so we're, we're just casually chowing down this. is just chowing down. It's pretty good. There's really no unpleasant surprises there. It really isn't. I could, mm. I could eat several of these, to be honest. I could snack on them. Yeah. Like snack food, because you have a hold in your hand. Little mini chickens, yeah. If, any, if McDonald's is listening... The Mac Frog. No, not the Mac Frog, but like Frog Snacks, Frog... Um, is there chips? Whatever, however they put that. Hmm, do they sell fast food frogs? No, they should though. Because this is like the perfect fast food. Yeah, I guess so. Dan wise, what would I give them frog's legs? Hmm. I think because they kind of surprised me, I'm willing to give them four Dan's. Uh, I know they're not amazing with taste, but the right seasoning could really take them there. I would say they are seriously. Seriously soft and seriously surprising. I was not expecting that. Rolling on to our next surprise of the day. And it better be surprising in a good way. 
because I'm really not looking forward to this one at all. This one's going to be delicious. It's another French favourite. It's snails. So I just plop down this delicious frog slice. So I'm not entirely sure I'm going to eat these, to be honest. Um, I'm going to retain my uh, club. So I, I, I pass you this one. It's bigger. And I'll kind of try and show this off. So what I can gather is that you have kind of a seasoning on top. There's like butter and then there's like a green seasoning. And then underneath, inside that, there is like the actual snail itself, which is like brown. Normally there's a special fork for eating this. Um, so you can't crack open the shell? I mean, of course you can, right? You can try. It seems pretty tough to make. It's pretty damn tough though, yeah. I'm going to have to kind of fish it out with the fork so I can pass you your fishing tool there. So, Smelling this, the seasoning is very pleasant. Very uh, green smelling. Yeah, the seasoning is clearly some kind of herb. The like garlic smell. Yeah. Melted in garlic. God, I think it must be garlic actually. It must be garlic and the butter. So I'm wondering if you can just... So I've seen it done in a cartoon and try to drink it out of the shell. That was oysters probably, not snails. I guess you could try them. If it isn't piping hot. Mmm, it is pretty hot. Let me drink a little bit of this seasoning goo. Yep. And it's buttery. Buttery and garlic. That's butter and garlic. Ah, we can actually fish out that. Fish out the actual... Ah, oh, there you go. Getting the meat. The meat of the business here. <laughs> Grab the paper because I feel like this is going to spill out. Okay, enormous mess. Mm. So... Oh, I nearly got it. It's a uh, challenge, eh? Actual forks aren't quite a... Uh... No, like I said, there's normally a special kind of fork. Oh, there you go, I got it. There you go. Oh, you've lost yours, but let me... Let me... Ugh, I've got green gunk on me now. Oh, that's just got one season. There you go, look. Oh, so, yeah. show it to the camera. This is the snail. So, I've learned... I actually learned something recently that's quite interesting. Yeah. And it's that, um... In really the low, and if you buy these kind of too cheap, they won't actually be snails, they'll be slugs. Huh. And they actually push them into the shells. And they don't apparently don't stay on the bucket. Damn, that is uh, terrible. So the snail itself, I mean. Come on, let me try to suck it out of the shell. No, you can't get yours. I'm going to wait and. Well, then you thought, sort of get it. No, but I got a load of seasoning. <clears throat> Come on. You kind of get its tail, but... Snail's getting cold! I think... What's it? It's kind of like an ear, because you're trying to shrink an ear. Yeah, it's... Uh, these shells are definitely... Uh, very I mean, the shell's a nice little thing after. Right? Like a little you decoration. get to take home a shell. Yeah. Bon appetit! That is particularly pleasant. Hmm. I don't care much for the texture. I like the texture of that. It's really soft and gooey. Yeah. I don't like that. It's very familiar to me. I can't quite put my finger on what that tastes like. I think it's the seasoning. Hmm. I really like that. Well, there you go. Surprising. Um, Clear of the French. You know what they're doing. That is clearly the case. I'm not too impressed by it. If you had a load of them and the right fork, then you could really chow down on that. Well, we have more of them. You can chow down later on. Well, I mean, I'm not really going to chow down. Oh. I was really surprised by them. I think, with all those herbs and spices, it was really tasty. And a really nice, rich texture to it. Probably going to give that a full five dans. That was pretty good. Um. I, I, I'm going to say seriously seasoned, because otherwise I'd have to say seriously bland again. Well, but so seriously there's, seasoned. There's no because, impressing you. Because to me, I, the seasoning came through more than anything else. Mm. I think they did that for a reason, maybe. Me. So, those cup items are the only things we have on the show today. Got a few more French items. Well, over here. France is known for three things. Frogs, legs, snails, 
and little puppy tails. Have you ever eaten dog before? Is that an actual dog's tail? A little puppy tail? No, it's not. Really? This is a um, dried sausage. In France, you generally don't... I mean, every time you essentially have a little like gathering, there's always someone who brings dried sausage. Hmm. And this is some now... There's, I've had dried sausage before. I like dried sausage. Um, it, there's essentially all types of flavours. It's always pork in some form with something else. For the show, of course, I kind of aim for something a bit more specific. So this is pork and wild boar. You can find these in essentially every manner of um, form, though, like pork and uh, nuts and stuff. Just pork. Yeah. So I've taken a little label off there. It's not really much to see on the label, to be honest. Show it close to the camera. It's very uh, dry looking. Hard. It's not powdery. It looks powdery, but it's not actually powder. Mm. Smell. You can smell that if you please. Ugh, that smells horrible. It reminds me of the master cheese, to be honest. It's like that wild boar went and rutted in its own filth. Yeah, it's, this is a very hard one. I've actually had ones that are kind of soft. This one is rock solid, to be honest. Um, I'll break us a little up. Ah, uh, cut a piece. Just let me, uh, let me get the cutting knife. I'll uh, cut this as you cut it in the, fran- in the French uh, compagnie. Oh. As well as uh, probably slice my finger off at the same time. Yeah, just uh, lead in that direction. Ooh, yes. Well, yeah. Uh... Okay. We won't have that bit. Ooh, wow. So already, uh, it's very oh, red inside. Very pe- pepperoni. Yeah, pepperoni is essentially the same thing, actually. Pepperoni is a dried sausage. It's really red. I, that looks like it's. Very nice. It's hot. It's hot. It looks like it's um, bloody. It's like a, a very weeping kind of meat. Yeah. About it flying halfway across the room. Get ready! There you go. Slice of sausage. And now I have a uh, slice too. So these are mostly pork and only a bit of. of wild ball. Wild balls, of course, are more expensive. That stinks to high hell. It doesn't smell really nice, does it? It's not a nice smell. And it's specifically hard. I've definitely had dry sausage, it's a lot softer than this before. There you go, finally managed to slice it. So a slice, I mean, it looks decent. It kind of smells like urine. Slightly damp urine. Like urine? Um, maybe? I, I guess, yeah, I can kind of see that. I can, oh, can kind of smell that. It's very greasy, isn't it? Inside. Yeah. Really greasy. Alright. Very close. Mm. Very oily. Yeah. Is it supposed to be eaten just raw then, like this? Yep. Or do you make it on a sandwich? Um, this type you generally wouldn't put in a sandwich because of how tough it is. Mm. It's like a snack, right? I mean, it's not, the taste isn't bad, but the texture is really tough. It's a little bit like a pepperoni, but like a bit, a lot greasier. It and it smells, and uh, you get a faint taste of that smell as well, which no matter what you do for form, it's really not coming, not shining through to me. No, that is, um, I mean, to me, the only real downside is the, is the, the fact that it's so hard. Because yeah. the, the taste isn't bad, in my opinion. The, uh, it's okay, it's a bit... And it doesn't blow me away. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, inducing my gag reflex mildly. Really? Yeah. Oh, so interesting because me and me. me I just... The texture is just. Uh, I think the texture is doing it a lot. The weird hard bits. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, mm. Yeah, not a fan of that one. No, I, I think the real upside is that for a, for a, for a second. Dan actually thought this was a dog's tail. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Especially with that little bit dangling up. Yeah, yeah, that was the uh, the call. Well, because there's a nice, a very subtle, there is a nice sort of hue to that taste. And bits of the texture kind of remind me of pepperoni. I'm going to give that two Dan's. 
The weakest score can be most hardest, friend Jeff, sir. Oh, yeah. Mm. I'll say that was seriously jaw-breaking because of the toughness. It's it's nice. The taste isn't bad, but yeah. I, I have had ones, like I said, that are a lot, um, a lot softer. So the last thing, let's let's move away from dinner and let's have a bit of dessert. Oh, yeah, chase us down the nice bit of dessert. So these are nougat au miel. So these with uh, with an orange filling. I mean, the most it's like Alsace actually where pretzels are made originally, mm. but they also kind of have a special in gingerbread. And um, this is something I've never actually had myself before in terms of gingerbread. So this will have. Seems very thick for gingerbread. Yeah, like I said, apparently it's just made from the base of it. It's also very soft if you feel. Oh, okay. There's, like, there's actually two gingerbreads, as far as I'm aware. There's like the soft and hard gingerbread. In England, you generally find hard gingerbread. Yeah. France, though, gingerbread is more like a cake. Ah. Wow, I look close to a cake. Yeah, so let's crack it open. Look to it. There's a weird hole in the top. I guess that's where they put the orange filling in. Ah oh, yes. So they've injected the filling. Kind of say the slightest hint of the orange. I like the baked smell of this actually. Yeah, it's also got. Um, it's worth pointing out that it has um, sugar um, glazing on it. This feels and smells like it's going to be very good. It does, yeah. It does. Yeah. It promises itself. It promises a lot. Yeah. Closer look at that. Because it's got that filling, I'm gonna rip this open. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. Huh. It's a generous dollop of a. Yeah, of orange. Of oranginess. Orange jam. You can definitely see the gingerbread though. Yeah. Alright. Finally, something I can look forward to. Well, you like most of this stuff today. I did, but I didn't look forward to it. Oh, yeah, good point. Oh. Mm. Well, it's very sugary. Mm. An interesting glazing sugar at the top. Mm. I really like the gingerbread hit. Yeah, the gingerbread is strong, isn't it? I mean, the orange really goes with the gingerbread. This is great. Oh. Gotta get a bit of orange myself because I kind of cracked it open in a way that all the orange was on one side, not the other. The icing just melts in your mouth around the rest of it. Hmm. This is a great cake. It's pretty yeah. good. Now, if you want to pick these up, you have to as well, that's. Mm. Right, they're right. made regionally. They are made and handmade, actually. Hmm. By a company, I believe, called Lips. Which, um, which is based, uh, where does it say now? Lips in Gersbier. So, um, I don't think they ship anywhere else around other than outside of Alabama. And despite being made fresh, they kept well because you carried them around for like a week or so now and, yep. uh, and they're still really good. Yeah. They were great. Five Dans again. Two Five Dans in this one episode. That's some amazing going. What, what can you say? What can you say? The French make good cooking. French seem to know their stuff. I would say that was seriously gingerbread. Makes no sense, but um, <laughs> it was seriously good. It was serious anyway. And so, what we kind of learned over the last two French episodes, this one and the previous one with the cheeses, is that the French really are no pushovers. They make great food. Even the weird stuff that you're not too sure about, you should venture out and try it because the French know what they're doing. Apparently so, yeah. I could actually eat another uh, pair of frog legs, to be honest. Uh, yeah, the frog legs were good, the snails were good. Cake things are good. I mean, that sausage probably wasn't, but maybe that was German. But <laughs> that's some uh, good food overall. So thank you once again for all those delicious snoods. It was my pleasure. That gourmet session there. And that brings us to the end of another Seriously Hungry. Hope you enjoyed the show. All right. We'll see you guys next time. See you on the flip side. Finally, here I am in Paris. Thanks to good old Gekadami's advice, I know just what treat. So how? Mm. Bon appetit! <laughs>